My name is Rhapsody, and welcome back to Bolt of the Void. We're going to be going into another impossible run. Interestingly, though, we are going to be playing the Blade. Um, I think I'm supposed to play a Bleed deck this time, but we're going to play the Blade deck. And there's a reason behind this. The Hidden Blades have been changed, and a lot, and I do mean a lot, of artifacts have been added into the game that actually synergize with those relics in particular. So... We're going to be taking advantage of that as best we can with the hidden blade here. Let's jump in. Okay, that's a lot of bleed support right there. Thousand Cuts and Blade Storm would both be great in that build. Backpedal, Repeated Strike, Opening Move. I probably... like. There's a lot of things competing to be Opener already in this deck. Right? It's real hard to justify anything else. Now, here's the hidden blade. The upgrade to it now, instead of removing inert, so therefore the void zone would be able to trigger as many times as combo as you have plus one. Instead of that, it now rebounds. The first time it's played in a turn, it'll be returned to your hand. Uh, so it's significantly more damage effective, but less capable of, well, generating all of your defense. And that seems fair enough. Hey, maybe we take the Dueling Buckler as a result of that, just so that we have some support. I could see that. Trying to make sure that I have some support through my Dueling Buckler combo. Hmm. Yeah, sure, let's do it. Also got the Void Spawns with one less Frenzy from Battle Round 6 onwards during the Void Fight. Start each fight with 50% rage for the rest of the turn. All attacks deal more damage. Can be stacked additively. Uh, the void will also start with 20% damage taken over here. And then during the void fight at the start of each turn, overcharge and increase our max energy by one. Seems good to me. 300 essence. Man, I haven't seen a disheveled salesman in a real long time, it feels like. Um... I'm probably going to go for the random class uncommon here, actually. Apprentice's Blade. Combo one. Gain two temporary hidden blades. Upgrades to three. And it doesn't expel. Yeah, that's exactly the kind of thing that we're going to want here. Boom. Put that on the line. Boom. Oh, natural 20 for vulnerability to all enemies is great. Uh, unfortunately, Dueling Buckler is <gasps> on the opposite side to Puncture. We've seen the power of Puncture before. Are you aware of the power of Puncture? That's our answer, Grant. Lock it in. Uh, scatter shots down here. Soul Collector, a little bit early for you, unfortunately. Probably not going to get a huge amount of value out of that. I could go and get instead soul value from the Dark Idol. Um, try and get a Red Relic from there. Killing Blow, second chance. Stiletto! So Stiletto is basically the old version of the Hidden Blade. Right? It's balanced. It doesn't have inert on it. It's swift. It's an attack. This is such a good run for showing off a bunch of these effects. We've also got the recharge there. Uh, yeah, this, this path is going to be a little bit spicy. Let's think about it for a second, actually. Because we're definitely going up. Right, and then Sanguine Shell, Natural 20, Anemia. So, like, I could have a pretty successful time going like this. But that annoys... Uh, uh, annoys, rather, sorry. It ignores Puncture. And uh, literally just giving me two Volatile Hidden Blades for one energy would be more than enough. But if you're also going to add in making all my damage bleed this turn... Yeah, yeah that's going to be a huge amount of our damage. Um, so I don't really think we're going to be ignoring that. Which means that all of those have to be turned off, because that has to go on. It looks like the best path following that is something like this. Uh, although, recharge in cold blood... Actually, you know, that, yeah, that's fine. Right? And then the dark mime, honestly... If I have something good in the stiletto by that point, go to the Dark Mime and dupe it happily. That's almost certainly going into our pathing as a direct result of that. Uh, then leave. 
So we have one, two, two blank spaces along here. This could be the secret room, but if it's the secret... Ah, if this is the secret room... Yeah, I can turn down natural 20 and upgrade happily. Okay, so 300 essence. Is that going to matter? We are actually parving into the first merchant now. So I'll take it. That'll do, pig. That'll do. Okay, so we have the apprentice's blade. Natural 20. Reinforcement sanguine shell. Just clarifying to make certain there were none of those that I needed to change in any way. Uh, let's take a single slash out of the deck, put a dueling buckler in. We're tending a little defensive with this one at the moment. So actually take the uh, parry out and put a repeated strike in. Due to what I'm going to do in the future, I feel like Red Voidstone doesn't even want to be played in any of these. Because I'm going to want to put that in possibly a stiletto. Because then if I play that at the start of my turn and then follow up with a bunch of Hidden Blades, those Hidden Blades are playing for, oh, I don't know, 100% extra rage. Without the use of an additional off kind of build card, you know? This should be good. I'm so pleased with this path already. Okay. Do I want to Ghost Blade? Because I can probably kill both of those champs if I go for the Ghost Blade. The Slash is worth 15 by itself. So yeah, I could definitely kill him. Sure, I can just stall on the Void Enchantress after that. Slash. Use that power for quickness. Get another combo after it. Actually, got him. And then I'm just going to wait until the Ghost Blade is one turn off of cooldown and then I'll kill. It's coming. Hopefully I, yeah. At least draw a single defend on that turn. Come on. Perfect. Yeah, couldn't be more pleased with that fight. Get our perfect victory. I'll go up here for... My god, we did get the secret room as well. So we miss out on natural 20. I'm totally fine missing out on that. Oh, okay. Smoke bomb. Deep cuts all in. All in. Apply foresight to all cards until the end of the turn. Suffer vulnerable too. So if I had draw... You remove expel on the upgrade. That's wild. Uh, To all cards. Wait, wait. To all cards until the end of the turn. So even the cards in your hand. That's really interesting. I, I like the idea of it. I just don't know if I'm going to be able to exploit it as easily as I'll be able to exploit this one over here. Increase target bleed by 50%. Yeah, I'm taking the smoke bomb. I, I think it's Smoke Bomb and then Upgrade Smoke Bomb and Apprentice's Blade. Just pop both of them in the deck. Uh, I'm going to cut two slashes because I want to use my combo significantly less often. Oh my god, Puncture as well. We already kind of have a build. Like, like a very, 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 very solid build. You know, all we really need at this point is relics. Each time you cast your spell combo one. Ruined Pommel. Uh, each time you play an attack, increase the counter on this by one. When the counter reaches 12, trigger bleed on all creatures. That's not bad, but I think with Ruined Pommel and the Temporary Blades, I might actually be able to take both quicknesses out of the deck. Not that I'm really, like, hanging on an edge to be able to do that, but it'd be nice to do if we could, you know. In with that. Don't get the uh, vulnerability because that's not possible. Gotta remember that. Pop. Pop. Underhanded tactics for a bunch of weak. Seems good. And then, sure, we'll get one of those out there too. Um, seem reasonably likely to draw 10 defense in the next turn. There it is. One, two, three, four, and drop that get up to two combo for the start of the next turn that's going to matter because we have a dueling buckler in the deck that yep could provide all of our block well almost all of our block i mean 10 okay 
Okay, I might have to hold on to this parry to be able to guarantee a perfect block here. Yup. Certainly looks like I had to. Parry, parry. Purge, purge. And then... Three temp hidden blades. Get them for... Get them for damage. Uh... That repeated strike is interesting afterwards, but not now. There we go. So pleased. Uh, cut a slash for... God, I may actually, like, cut all slashes on the first floor here. I Now, I know this puncture stacks with itself to apply bleed 2 whenever an enemy takes damage. So that means this puncture specifically wants a Black Void Zone. Well, 100%. It just definitely, definitely do. Uh, this Smoke Bomb, I could happily just rig that, put that in your opening hand. Um, I don't think I need to yet, but we'll keep an eye out for it. A mongrel, Forsaken Puppy, and Sanderhound. No, you know what? That's that's just that that's too much. That's too stubborn. Just put that in there. That's good there. This one's good out here. Uh, I have two vulnerability I can set up on target. Cool. I'm gonna slash. Purge that and get a smoke bomb out. 20, so I get to kill you, and then I can also kill the forsaken puppy. One down, two down. And now I literally just need to wait as many turns as I can and then kill this target in a single turn. Use the slash and then parry. I think just trying to get some combo up so the kill is a lot easier to reach for. And this will do it. Perfect. <laughs> Very literally. All right. Uh, puncture is two hidden blades after the upgrade. Yeah, I totally get that upgrade. There's a stiletto up here as well. And we're earning our voids. I'm very excited about this run. <laughs> there are so many good things happening and about to happen in this run. I... I've been really, really, really waiting for the moment that I get to record a hidden run after I saw the changes. Hmm. Corrupted Ogre. Yeah. Nothing I really ought need change here. One, two, three, four, five. Ah. Uh. Hmm. Why am I not using the Hidden Blades yet? Let's just do that. Should have used it last turn, probably. Okay, I'm actually going to go for the Weaken Super Hit there. My god. i got to hold on to the Yellow Void Stone for the Stiletto. I kind of want one of the Stilettos to have the Yellow Void Stone. But... If both of them have the yellow void stone, like all of my block is covered, which means maybe the red void stone does want to go somewhere else. It's hard to figure out where though. Apprentice's blade. I really like the idea of comboing Apprentice's blade with a like pretty much any source of of temporary blades. I want to just pop a black void stone in. That's probably not going to be viable. Last run, we had so many Black Void Stones that I'm now expecting to be bereft of Black Void Stones for a fair few runs in a row. Only makes sense. The Ark of the Universe. Bending. Uh, Ghostly Piranha. Hmm. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm totally fine. Pop a wee bit of a Ghost Bomb out there. Purge, two, three, two cards. 
Yeah, I just need to be able to try and full defend next turn. Well. Defend, defend, defend. Drop that slash. Keep the apprentice's blade. I don't really want to give any of them vulnerability yet. Increase their frenzy. Start taking more damage. It's a lot of incoming damage. Okay. So if I slash as the opener, then quickness and apprentice's blade. Three of these kill an individual target. One, two, three. And then two of them will kill you because you're vulnerable. I don't get the final kill this turn. So I do take the 24 damage. But we also find our way out. Soul Collect is still not worth it, right? Those two fights aren't really worth it to me. Actually, is that a path that I can do? Bop, bop, bop. 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 No, because then this won't be available to be chosen. But I mean, is that bad? Do I care about going south after that? I mean, I could go to another merchant later. I kind of like how the build already is. In Cold Blood could end up being a giant, giant finisher, right? It has the swift tag. It triggers the target's bleed. And Puncture is going to be a pretty good setup. And we definitely want to visit that Dark Mime. But I just get so little value out of those two. I can't get over how little value there is in them. Fine. I'm changing my pathing. I'm going to ignore that treasure. All right, we're still going to the Merchant regardless, though. Oh, that's Swift Hand. Hmm. So it's it, it's like this turn combo can be four. It matters a lot, but do I want it? Center blood block six, get the energy. No, no, no. Okay. Hidden Blade with the rebound on it as well. I mean, this is a substantial amount of damage already, but if I take the upgraded version of it, I can't get Swift Hand. So let's have a look at the deck, right? The deck is very literally just going to be Swift Attacks. Every turn, two of them are generated. Uh, as the deck starts to take shape, it's quite likely that I generate up to two more a turn. Um, so what does this represent? It's an X spell as well. It's quite costly energy wise. We've already got some powers in the deck that are going to be quite costly for us. It will force the stilettos to trigger one more time. I, I think there are other ways, like with the cards that I'll be using and the fact that they're all balanced. I think there are going to be other ways to utilize or, or to rather more easily attain the effect of them triggering an extra time than to have Swift Hand, which only works on the single turn and then expels. Um, I'm going to take the upgraded hidden blade. And that can just happily go into the deck. There you go. Pop on in there. That has a Nurt on it, though, so it's very unlikely I put any Void Stone into it. Uh, Alright, Dark Idol. Eight souls for a random uncommon. Go for it. Reduce the cooldown on all spells by one. Yeah, that's... Yes. Yes, please. Uh, I'm going to take From Shadow literally just as a defensive card. 
did not need that space, as it turns out. Cop speed. Yeah, you can get stronger every turn. I betcha I get stronger faster. Every six time a block card is played, it'll trigger an additional time. We're not really going to put any block cards into this deck. Um, we will be looking for a bide. Uh, gain 18 upgrades to 22, or it might be 16 upgrades to 22 block. Three energy. Uh, gives you two combo as well. Band of Power seems like the correct one, though. The thing is, trigger an additional time is only going... It, it's not is played again, right? It's trigger an additional time, and I'm already triggering them all additional times. Gosh, Band of Power and uh, Band of Resilience both kind of uniquely suck in this run. Coin of Good Fortune. If you end up... Sorry, if you end your turn without taking damage, tick this coin's value up by one to a maximum of seven. At the end of a fight, gain 15 essence for each count on the item. Resets after each fight. Okay, so seven triggers of 15. Did I work this out before on camera? I almost certainly did, right? Six triggers of 15. Three triggers of 15 is 45, so seven is 105. Uh, and then that's that's... Up to 105 essence each fight. It's a pretty guaranteed 30 to 50 essence each fight. Okay. I've never taken before. Let's take it. I'm gonna slash for the opening. Purge, purge, quickness, smoke bomb. Uh, I kind of want to, like, this has a three turns cooldown right now. I want to start going. Is it go time already? I think it's go time. Gotta get the cooldown started, no? Look at that dueling buckler double parry turn right there. Hell yes. And it rebounds back to hands. Oh, man, it is real hard to defend against this enemy. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm probably no longer able to. No, my next hand is all blades. So instead, I just purge this and then we go off next turn, take my 16. Blades. Hmm, blades, 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 purge, purge. Could I interest you in even more blades? Perhaps a puncture? Yeah, 45 essence from the coin of good fortune. Yeah, just, yeah. you know, you know, big eh, energy. Uh, stiletto, okay. Here's the reason that we would have wanted to go south, is for the upgrade on Stiletto before we go to the Dark Mime. That's... That's a reason. But here now maybe uh, gives me the opportunity to think about upgrading something else instead. It's only two more damage it gets. Honestly, like, the Stilettos would mainly be in the deck as block. Nah, I... It's... No. Uh-uh. Yeah, go away. Get in the deck. Um... I'm going to take all the slashes out of the deck at this point and just pop defense of different kinds in. Because honestly, that makes way more sense right now. Ghostly Piana. Smoke bomb, quickness, okay. Still don't want to debuff any of them until I'm killing. But this ought to be a good turn, hopefully. 16 incoming. Uh, why couldn't we get a stiletto? We get dueling buckler and parry for the full block. 
12, and then all remaining ones will deal 18. So 18, 18, 36, 12 is 48. That's the ability to kill any target on the field. One, two, three. 12, and then this would be 32. So, yep, you can take down another target too. And we'll definitely do as a result. Another turn without taking damage here. I I don't think I am going to play to extending rounds as long as possible for the sake of getting things like the coin of good fortune to trigger as many times as possible or always doing it for the spell. Um, I If I feel very threatened, as you saw like a couple of runs ago, uh, I'll definitely consider it, but not by uh, by base going to be doing it all the time. All right, leprechauns and red caps. We kill too quickly for them. Set of vulnerability and attack. I mean, that rebounds. I could have played it next hand as well. Now we've got the Ghost Blade play into Dueling Buckler plus Parry, single Blessed Recovery. We're actually, I can swap in and out the Blessed Recovery based on whether or not I need to heal up. That's not, it's not an issue at all. Not super keen on this whole 23 incoming sitch we've, uh, we've got going down right now. And that was only with one of the enemies attacking. That's not okay. I'm already on enough quickness. Stilato is uh, thankfully a giant amount of damage still for us. And we ought be able to clear the left relatively quickly here too. Let's go recovery. Make sure we actually do get value out of that one. And kill. Dark Mime. This is a rare card with a thing in. There's, yeah, nine souls to duplicate. Come on. It's, it's based on the rarity, right? It's, it's nine. Um, Smoke Bomb 11? I don't want him. There's too many voids. Like, all of my pathing next floor would have to be decided around specifically countering that. One more soul. I know there were a few of those treasure chests that gave zero souls. I saw ya. No soul treasure chest. Uh, well. This is indeed awkward. I think I might just have to work hard to remove them. Or I could just dupe the Apprentice's Blade. That's also good, right? With that Apprentice's Blade and my hero power, I, I won't need any quicknesses in the deck instantly. But then where do I find my defense? Dueling Buckler and a single Stiletto. I mean, we could possibly get a Dark Mime next floor. Dupe with the Stiletto there after upgrading it. I'm going to take another Apprentice's Blade here, actually. Blades upon Blades. This has Swift. And says, deal 11 damage, gain one Volatile Hidden Blade. It has Swift itself. So you expend all of your combo getting a bunch of hidden blades, and then, ideally, you have some way in hand of working your combo all the way back up. Uh, we have a spell that gives us two combo, so that would be great. If only I'd lingered in a fight a couple more times so I could get the base version of this. All hidden blades will trigger plus two times, though. I mean... 
pretty pretty easy take right there let's cut both quicknesses go for mithril blades apprentices get another empty room starting to tick up that sneak artist uh this fight is just going to be me going straight for the swamp mistress i i'm not even really going to entertain anything else so ideally next turn i get some combo I don't think that's going to do it. I don't know if I want to start with two comp... Mm, no, no, no. Starting a turn earlier is still worth it, Ryan. Yep. About as well as I think I can do that. Half the enemy's HP, as well as a bleed on them that'll kill them in a couple turns' time. Mm. Well, it looks like I'm going to take damage in this fight because I can't block at all. Block, block, block. Uh, block. Uh, combo, combo. And those combos turn into block with the dueling buckler. So this is really unfortunate here. Yeah? Let's just play those out. Okay. Hey, there we go. That's more what I was looking for. Stiletto and then a bunch of hidden blades. Two random void stones. Yup. What do we get? Uh, a blue and a yellow? Yeah. It's fine. Gain one energy for the next three swift cards played. So this is a gain to energy. It's effectively what it says, because we always play Hidden Blades. There's an item down here. There's a From Shadow on the top side. Opportunist for the throat. Crimson Slaughter. All enemies with the uh, bleed suffer vulnerable to trigger or bleed afterwards. Aggressive attack over here as well. I don't really want those for those sake, but obviously I do want them for the sake of the I mean, there's a soul collector even in between them, right? So we've got a pretty dictated path. We have to go from the bottom up to this. Uh, which means then we're going sustenance across. Tactic, like, all of that's happening. Main Gauche. Ability block six, gain a volatile hidden blade. Upgrades to block ten. Hey. Totally fine little piece to put in the deck there. Um, So it looks like the optimal path right now is something like this. In fact, is there any reason to deviate from this so far that I've seen? Not even slightly. Is there anything I really deeply want to modify about this deck? When a card with inert trees multiple times becomes stable for the rest of the turn. Yeah, okay, so yes, this will still only trigger a void stone once. It's not that, like, the following plays of the swift attack won't trigger it again. It's also the rebounded version won't trigger it. Because the void stone itself becomes disabled. Hmm. Recharge is pretty good. I probably end up putting that in the deck somewhere. Um, like right about now. Funk Soul Brother, check it out now. Funk Soul Brother, right about now. Um, a repeated strike and eh, those kind of want to just get out of the deck too. Let's get those two out of the deck. Put the puncture back in. You know what I do need right now is access to weak and slow outside of underhanded tactics, which itself is only access to weak. Tixidimist and a non-holy creation. Happy with it. Ooh, that's a hell of an opening turn right there. I kind of want to even hold on to cards, and I know that's not how you play the openings. 
Uh, we'll smoke bomb, purge. Let's roll. I have no combo, I can hold. Well, let's recur the apprentice's blade. Purge a single barry. Use the apprentice's blade. And a ghost blade thereafter. All right, Succidimus. <clears throat> it's time to die. I'm aware it's taxidermist. Uh, da -da -da. This, this, this would even only uh, cast one time. Wouldn't even block me enough. That's fine. Wait, no. It still triggers the extra blocks? Oh, interesting. Thank you, game. Kind of you. Yeah, it's kind of good fortune. Uh, I'm defending myself okay. It's, 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 that's not the problem. <laughs> problem is the fights are just over real quick. Anyway, it's a good problem to have. Um, Stiletto and Dueling Buckler both really want upgrades right now. Dueling Buckler most of all. My damage isn't my problem. <laughs> Okay, no secret room. I've just been finding a lot of secret rooms recently as though they were made more common. Hmm. Hmm. I actually kind of want to purge everything except for the apprentice's blade. What if instead I purge the apprentice's blade? Then I'd use a recharge to get the Apprentice's Blade back? Okay, yeah, I'm just gonna purge everything except the Apprentice's Blade then. We have to kill the Berserker in a single turn. We have no choice about that. If we're killing, we need to do it. And in fact, this is exactly the turn to do it. Let's go. Mithril Blades into Apprentices into Ghost Blade. Spooky. 81. One down. 18's over here, so. Two down. No respawns. <gasps> oh. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Very strong. I guess I'll just purge all the rest of that. No need to even worry. I mean, look. I could stall this fight for a couple more turns. So wait, four, it's 60 essence I get out of doing this if I do it. Okay, fine. One turn, two turns. It's gonna be quick, that's why I'm doing it. Well done, you got me to block. All right. <laughs> Okay, maybe when it's quick like that and I don't actually have to really compete against the enemy, then I'm more comfortable doing it. Okay. Yeah, I don't I don't need to do any exchanging over there, thank you. Veiled Watcher. Come stronger as I draw out weakness cards, they give themselves, it's fine. Don't really think this is gonna change the way we play at all. I'm worried I'm not going to have enough defense in the next stand. I think resultingly I'm going to purge those two and actually hold on to two parries. So literally a single parry draw is enough for me. Okay, so... <laughs> Someone decided to make a case here and gave me almost exclusively block cards. And when I say almost exclusively, what I mean is... Actually, exclusively block cards. And now I still need more defense. Hmm. Uh, 24. I can block 18 this turn maximum.
really starting to feel weak. That's 31 incoming damage. Yikes. Uh... There's no way I have time to set that up this turn. One down, yay! Two down, 26 incoming. Well, that stiletto really feels like it was a good dupe last fall now, doesn't it? Oy. Yeah, we're having real regret hours over here in Rhapsody Central. One, two, perch, that. I'm not going to kill this turn yet. Not for the coin of good fortune's sake. Kind of hoping to draw into the blessed recovery, but there's no way I'm defending enough times this turn. Recharge is even more important based on the fact that the stiletto and the dueling buckler keep being at the bottom. Or, uh, keep, keep being uh, inconsistently common for us. That said, I don't think upgrading it to remove its expel does anything. I think we almost always kill in the first cycle. I get that stiletto upgrade. I may actually just start upgrading straight up defense at this point. I'm, like, I'm definitely that desperate. Thank heck I haven't put all these void stones in, eh? Whew. Gains AP bo uh, bonus based on the, excuse me, number of void stones we have in the deck. Let's play that. Get some combo up because we intend to stiletto. Whew. I like that we actually managed to defend the turn one attack from the, uh, the Mimic here. It's not super common. The enemy's just going to be doing 19 damage every single turn. Die. Whenever you discard or expel a card, deals three damage to a random enemy, expels itself, upgrades to be five. Uh, discard or expel a card? Volatile cards aren't expelled, right? Volatile, can't be purged, destroyed when played or at the start of the turn. That doesn't use the expel keyword, so. I imagine that's not going to be relevant. Uh, Furious Assault, that's going to turn out to be significantly less defense than just more shivs. I actually don't really care about any of these. Mm, take Sleight of Hand then. And then, uh, do I stand by what I said? You know, focus is going to be one of our upgrades, the absolute least. My God, I really don't want to have to stand by what I said. Oh, that's a pseudo defensive upgrade. If you want to think about it like that, please think about it like that because then it doesn't count as the thing that I said prior. Um, let's get that focus in there. Assassin Knight Priest. Short foot, aggressive attack, Crimson Slaughter, Fall to Throne. I'm not even guaranteed to find slow in that merchant if I go there. I don't think I found slow in any of the other merchants either. Are we actually going to be going without slow to the final area? I am worried. Uh, I'm worried. I'm worried based off of that. The run can be as strong as it would like, and I am still deeply concerned by that. We're a quick killer, so we go knight first, then assassin, then priest. If we were super slow, we'd go priest, then assassin, then knight. Okay. Easy ghostly blade. 
I real I just want to draw the dueling buckler or the stiletto at any point. It'd be nice. It'd just be really nice, you know? Just just have some confirmation that they're there in the deck, that they're here with me. Because I'm feeling like a ghost hunter. Are you here with me? No? Okay, I'll check back later. Uh, I mean, I can't kill you. Wait, no, this has rebound on it still. So I can kill you, in fact. Uh, which is going to be important because it's going to significantly lower the incoming damage for the next turn. Play these two, post that. Yeah, otherwise the incoming damage this turn was going to be like 25. Um, interesting. God, there has got to be a good way to play this hand, right? Like a focus, recharge, focus. Single hidden blade. Apprentice's blade. Then getting the mithril blades played out at the very end. I actually really like that. Okay, so it's... Focus. Wait. Gain one energy for the next X swift card plates. So if I play another focus, it's not going to be gain two energy for the next X Swift cards played. It is going to be gain one energy for the next X Swift card plays where X is now six. So that whole play that I just planned out, uh-uh, don't work. So let's do something else, apparently. Um... There we go. We got the Mithril Blades out and we defend it. I mean, it's it it not that bad. It's just it doesn't leave me on the ridiculous amount of energy I was really hoping to be left upon. Okay. Got my power up next turn. Why must you generate these cards in this order? It's puncture. Recharge the puncture. Use it again. Obviously use focus. One kill. 18. Okay, we actually get the kill over here. Thank heck. I really didn't want to have to use the power again. Light of hand. Just got a spell card. We're not really doing that commonly. It feels like I might need an underhanded tactics in this deck at this point now. Fine. Gonna upgrade one, pop it into the deck. We actually get a source of weakness in here. I'm I'm not happy about this at all, but if the game is not gonna offer me any other sources, I guess I gotta. Um, I'm also gonna put a yellow void stone into that. Should set us up a little better. Okay. Um. Smoke bomb. I don't really want to play uh, underhanded tactics yet. Um, I want to have a way to guarantee that I get all of my combo back after I play it. So perch, perch, smoke, prandizes, and then go for the chosen champion. I guess just. Uh, yeah, go for the chosen champion. In fact, exactly kill the Chosen Champion on turn one. Now we have zero incoming damage next turn. Do I just throw the Stiletto? I'm going to be entirely surprised, actually. No. Yeah, exactly. We just lost the... Hang on. Uh, it discarded the card. Yeah, we just lost recharge. It went to the top of the discard. Uh, so I would not have been able to get Stiletto back had I just thrown it there. Quite pleased. Okay. Focus into Poncha. Make sure we get the Apprentice's Hidden Blades out there as well. And keep on keeping on until we have the King dead. I didn't want to do that. Five Banes are just added to my deck now. Oops. Um, they were actually added to my discard pile. Okay, that's a little easier to deal with. 12. It's going to be 12 
as well. Uh, I need more rage and more vulnerability access. Hmm. From where shall I find all that? Ooh, we even get to work a blessed recovery into this fight. Nice. Yeah, I don't just don't necessarily know if we even have the ability to access that at this point. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine just getting the kill now. 60 essence for the coin of good fortune. And another 60 for the bonus fight being perfect. Yeah. That I with both of these would more than doubled the amount we got from that. So Feeling decent about that, but also, where am I going to spend any of the money that I've just collected? Ooh. We're familiar with this fight. Oh my god, that's some good early block as well. Um. Let me give you a little bit of a week in. I'll hold on to the From Shadow here, I think. Eh, that slows my cycle for the draw. You know what? I trust Stiletto. It learned its lesson. It's gonna be in the next hand. Uh, sorry, next, next hand. It's, um, I misspoke. <clears throat> um, yeah, it's, uh, it was a pun. That's, that's what it was. I, uh, uh didn't misspeak, but, um, in, intentionally? Uh, let's... Focus, throw a single attack out, and then... One more time. Clearly I needed to count that before I attacked, cause... That enemy's given me something to remember them by. And the thing they gave me was damage. Uh, I might already be like completely screwed and have to restart this fight if I want to even continue. I'm gonna try and not do that. Thirty-eight still incoming next turn. Oy. That's a lot of damage. Please give me access to something that can help mitigate this game. It's, it's just cruel at this point. Um, guess I have to. Purge one to play the other, and then hold the final Apprentice's Blade so I can try and close out this fight. Well, my valuation of things just suddenly changed a lot. Okay, Puncture. Purge the Underhanded. Get back Puncture. Play that one again. Good art. Do I have any health potions? Strength, draw, exploding. Nope. It's a hag. Anytime I target her with an attack card, she'll reflect damage back at us and she also gains frenzy as the fight goes on. Uh, okay, each time you play an attack, this artifact gains charge. If you have eight or more charges, playing a block will cause it to ow, trigger plus one times and consume eight charges. So big block cards are significantly more effective with Jaegis of Ifram. I like it. Great, great item right there. S smoke bomb triple purge.
Unfortunately, I have to have the ability to either kill the enemy in a single turn or defend after killing. So that's Stiletto and, and the Buckler. All right. Oh. So these won't disappear unless I... Wait, I can... Hang on! These are temporary? I just assumed they were volatile. Oh, wow. Well, the enemy has decided to start attacking. I still haven't found du the Dueling Buckler or Stiletto. The things I'm going to need to not die. So as you may imagine, I seem uh, concerned because I am. Hmm. <laughs> All right, uh, 28, yeah, there's, there's no way I can block with the cards we have in there. Puncture, bring back the puncture, there's a puncture again, there's the, also, just nothing I get to do here. If I did that on any earlier turn, I just would have died on any earlier turn. Oh! The heck? Why? Oh. Uh, hey, you know what? This run showcases the highs and lows of running with those shivs. Real, real high peaks early, but uh, not being able to find any support for weak or any support for slow really, really hurt us. Um, I also definitely should have just counted my damage against that Berserker rather than taking for granted I was going to kill it. I did think I was on three combo rather than two combo. Again, that's something I should have checked at the time. I just, I saw all the things in hand and I was like, yeah, it's a dead enemy. It's going to be totally fine. Well, it happens. Kill me. Because I'm coming back for you, probably in the next episode, because I really want to get this deck off the ground. But until next time, my name is Rhapsody, the name of the game has been Vaulted the Void. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves, there's a playlist in the description down below with all my content of the game, past, present, and future, and hopefully we'll see you next time.